2,300 years ago, Alexander the Great, Aristotle's pupil, brought his dream of culture and conquest, of uniting the world and launching a new era to the timeless land of Egypt. Alexander selected the site for a new capital, Alexandria, which became Egypt's capital for nearly a thousand years. His successors in Egypt, the Ptolemies, built Alexandria and made it the intellectual capital of the world. Its status as a beacon of culture was symbolized by Pharos, the legendary lighthouse that was one of the seven wonders of the world. What setting could have excelled this for the stormy relationship between Cleopatra and Mark Antony? Alexandria's greatest legacy was the ancient library of Alexandria, part academy, part research center, and part library. The great thinkers of the age, scientists, mathematicians, poets from all civilizations came to study and exchange ideas. As many as 700,000 scrolls filled the shelves. Here came Aristarchus, the first person to state that the earth revolves around the sun a full 1800 years before Copernicus. The list of great names and great achievements goes on and on. Eratosthenes proved that the earth was spherical and calculated its circumference with amazing accuracy 1700 years before Columbus sailed on his epic voyage around the world. Hipparchus established the first atlas of the stars and calculated the length of the solar year accurately to within 6.5 minutes. Callimachus, the poet, described texts in the library organized by subject and author, becoming the father of modern library science. Euclid wrote his Elements of Geometry, the basic text studied in schools all over the world, even now. Herophilus identified the brain as a controlling organ of the body and launched a new era of medicine. Archimedes invented the screw pump, still used all over the world today. For 600 years, this was a great center of learning, until it burned down in the 3rd century. Later, generations of immigrants from Greece, Italy, and the Levant settled here and made the city synonymous with commerce, cosmopolitanism, and bohemian culture. This Alexandria has been immortalized by writers such as E. M. Forster, when Alexandria was a place where women strolled in sundresses, not in headscarves and caftans, and where religion was a matter of personal choice, not political campaigning. In 1974, the University of Alexandria began a campaign to build a new Library of Alexandria, dedicated to recapturing the spirit of openness and scholarship of the original Bibliotheca. Designed by Norwegian architect Snohedda, the library is a tilting disk, a sundial rising from the ground with four levels below ground and seven above. The substructure of the library is the most innovative part of the project. Its circular diaphragm wall is considered the largest in the world. Its exterior wall is a cloud of 4,000 granite blocks carved with letters from the alphabets of the world. One of the most successful features of the building is its use of natural light. In the main reading area, lights are switched on only after 1800 military time. The orientation of the roof panels was carefully studied on the computer at the design stage to introduce maximum levels of natural light without direct sunlight. Glare was dealt with in the design of the glass shading over the windows. The main reading area is one open space, where past, present, and future symbolically connect in a singular space. It covers 70,000 square feet on 11 cascading levels and can accommodate 2,000 readers at any one time. There are six specialist libraries, three museums, seven research centers, and a cafeteria. Additionally, the center features three permanent galleries, space for temporary exhibitions, a planetarium, and a public plaza. The BA is the first in Africa and the Middle East to provide researchers with a walk-in virtual reality system and houses the Internet Archive, a complete snapshot of all web pages on every website since 1996. Since the average lifetime of a page on the Internet is 100 days, this snapshot is retaken every two months. It represents about 1.5 petabytes of data stored on 880 computers. The entire collection is available for free access to researchers, historians, scholars, and the general public. The past is suddenly coming alive as underwater archaeology is bringing to light the sunken treasures of Alexandria, capturing the imagination of the world with glimpses of bygone glory. Can Egypt bring Cleopatra's palace back to life? Out of sight, but not out of mind, are ambitious and controversial plans to display the submerged glory. Rougerie has designed a building with four tall structures shaped like the sails of Feluccas, the sailboats that have journeyed the Nile since ancient times. These glass sails represent the four points of a compass, like the lighthouse of Alexandria that illuminated the library and the world.